Hi everybody, it's Lindsay from Fresh Intuition. Um, today's video is all about chronology and chronological order. Uh, so having a series of events that happened in different time periods can be quite confusing to follow if you don't know how one is linked to another. So we link them with a chronological order. So for example, um, we have the Battle of Hastings. The chronological order is that uh, Edward the Confessor died, Harold Godwinson the Saxon became king, William of Normandy and the Vikings prepared for war, as did Harold Godwinson, or King Harold as he was known at this time. Uh, Harold moved his army to the south of England because he was expecting William of Normandy first. The Vikings invaded England near York. Harold Godwinson marched his entire army the length of England to York and did battle where he won and the remaining Viking warriors were sent home defeated. Then uh, William of Normandy landed on the south coast of England at Pevensey Bay and Harold had to march his entire army who were uh, depleted in number because some of them had died, they were wounded and they were very tired and hungry um, so not really feeling their best, they had to march all the way down to the south of England to Hastings where William had just burnt the town. After he burnt the town he set up his own forts that he had brought with him in Viking ships which I, I think is really great forward planning um, and they set up their battle lines with William of Normandy at the bottom of a large hill and Harold Godwinson is his Saxon army at the top of the hill, which is um, defensively stronger. Then uh, they did battle. Eventually, William of Normandy won, and he uh, was technically king of England, but he had to get to London to be crowned for that to actually happen. Uh, so he didn't go straight to London, he went to Dover to fortify the castle because there was a um, group of soldiers there who could have uh, come behind him and caused a problem. So he, he went and he uh, he was surrendered to. They said, yeah, no, it's fine, you can be king, no problem, come on in, we don't want to fight. And, and actually here's the keys and if you'd like to make Dover stronger that'd be great. And he said, that'd be really nice, we can do that. Uh, so he, he built over up a little bit, he made his defences a bit stronger, and then having them on his side, then he marched to London to deal with what he thought was going to be quite a hostile city uh, and be crowned king. So when he got to London, he discovered it was not a hostile city. They opened the gates for him and allowed him in, and the nobles and priests decided that they would crown him as King of England. So that's a chronological order of that particular time period around a specific event. It's very different to a chronological order of, um, let's say, a, a period in history like the Tudors, where you have a series of different monarchs, a series of different wars, and um, different succession battles and things like that. Um, that chronological order has to be taken as each big event rather than the individual details. So you wouldn't mention that this person battled that person if nothing really came of it, but you might mention uh, Henry Tudor defeated this person to become king and he turned out to be the uh, seventh Henry of his line. Um, so that that's a different way of putting it. We can use chronology in other subjects as well and we use it slightly differently. So in um, science, chronology can be shown, can be used to show the changes in a model or a system that we have. One of the models that we have is of the atom. And we now know that the atom has a central dense nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons, and that there are electrons which are much, much smaller and orbit the nucleus in orbits or shells with energy levels. But it took a while for us to get that. Um, research started on what they thought might be something uh, by 400 BC and it didn't really change until um, John Dalton in 1803 came up with the word atom 
and he said that it was a, an indivisible sphere sphere sorry so it cannot be constructed or deconstructed that is it it's that particular thing um, his idea was quite basic and about 94 years later, J.J. Uh, Thompson came along and said that actually that sphere is uh, positive and that it contains uh, negatively charged particles called electrons which um, are distributed around the outside of the sphere. This idea was briefly accepted um, but Rutherford came along in 1909 and he said that actually um, the positive charge base is located in the centre in quite a dense mass and that the negative charges are orbiting the centre. So we're getting closer to our model. Um, and then a brief four years after that Niels Bohr came along and he said that the electrons, rather than orbiting randomly, orbit in specific energy levels and that we can predict um, where they're going to be. Um, so that's a, a very clear, clear chronology of events for the model of the atom. And what we have now is a, a combination of ideas from each of those. If we look at them out of order or study them individually, they don't make a lot of sense. But when we link one idea to only the information that they had at that time, then we can see where they might have got that idea and how the next person proved them right or wrong. And one of the things that you have to do at GCSE is to be able to explain some of the experiments that the scientists carried out to prove or disprove some of the models, um, which is pretty cool. So chronology can also be used in science. It's, it's not just equations or experiments with plants. Um, and we also use chronology when we are writing stories. So I don't know whether you know, but uh, this week is National Tell a Fairy Tale Day. And one of the things that my students will be doing this week is to come up with the building blocks or elements of a fairy tale. Fairy tales all have certain things in common. They all start with a particular Thing, and they all end with a particular thing and you might know that once upon a time and they lived happily ever after. They always have a good character. So they might be kind, they might be young and innocent, they might be very helpful towards others, um, but there's always a, a good character. They might be a particular hero. There is usually a bad character as well. So someone who is seen to be sinister, someone who is evil, uh, and very often they are portrayed as a witch or a demon or a goblin or a gnome, something not so friendly. Almost all story, tell, story tales sorry, will have magic or enchantments of some kind, so there might be magical creatures, they might be talking animals, there might be magical objects like the dancing teapots in Beauty and the Beast, if you've seen the film. Uh, they might be enchanted objects uh, like Pinocchio. So he is made of enchanted wood and that is what makes him uh, lifelike. And um, magic is a, is a common thread through all of these fairy tales. Uh, some of these fairy tales will have royalty in them. So they might have um, castles, princes, princesses, kings, queens, things like that. And um, they might also have something to do with poverty, so a theme of not having enough to eat, um, not having the freedom to do what you want to do. And that leads us to universal truths. So very often they will have some sort of a truth, uh, like um, the triumph of a poor person in life is being able to always have enough food to eat, always having somewhere to shelter with their family. Uh, for some stories it's about the hope of love. Uh, whether that's love in a family or whether that is love with a partner, like uh, the princess finding the prince. Um, so those, those things are all uh, common events. And when we, we start to write our own fairy tale, we need to have a chronology of events in our heads or written down so that we can write things in the right order. Um, so what my students are going to do is come up with these key elements for their own story.
they're going to come up with a good and bad character, they're going to come up with their universal truth for this particular story. Um, so whether it's finding the prince or finding the princess, uh, or whether it's um, becoming rich or wealthy like in the Dick Whittington steel. Uh, and then they're going to think about the events that they want. So they have a starting point where things aren't that good and they have an end point where things are awesome and they live happily ever after. And we want them to look at how they get in between and what key events they're going to include. Once they have a clear chronology, then they can start to write their story and link one event to the next. So it's really important when you're writing things as well. Um, so I hope that's that's been interesting and useful. Uh, I'm going to sign off now and spend some time with Sizzle this evening. Um, I hope you have a lovely evening and let me know if you have any questions about uh, chronology in lessons or if you want to know about how to help improve it in your child. Thanks very much. Bye.